What's up guys? Thanks so much for stopping by the channel today. My name's Timothy and I've got another tutorial for you for the DJI Mavic Pro. I have been so impressed with this drone so far. Um, I've only used it a few times, um, but man, it just really, really blows me away every time. So today we're starting the series of going through all of the features of this drone uh, and how you can use it for your productions and for your vlogging and for your YouTube channel, whatever it might be. I'm going to go through each and every feature and show you exactly how to use this drone to the best of your ability. So hit that like button if you're excited, subscribe to the channel because this is going to be a whole series and let's get into the video. So today's video is on just the initial setup and the things that you do for your drone. Obviously, if you've got the Mavic Pro or if you're waiting for it, the very first thing you're going to do is charge your batteries. After you've done that, you're going to connect your phone of choice to the controller um, and then you're going to connect. All you have to do is power this on the drone and your DJI Go app. Uh, on your phone and the controller, it's all going to sync up and it's going to tell you to upgrade the firmware. You'll just hit one button, it'll download it, do it all for you. It's super easy, super user friendly. So the very first thing before you fly, you need to make sure that your firmware is up to date. After you check your firmware out, you're going to make sure your batteries are charged, everything's ready to go. You've extended the legs uh, and the props. They don't actually have to be fully extended or straight. Uh, centrifugal force is actually going to adjust these to the right place, so they can be just like this. It's totally fine. The next thing you're going to do is check your environment. Now this is really, really important, especially for today. And I want to show you something in the background here. You can't even barely see some of this ridge line, but there's actually a massive mountain ridge that goes all the way back behind me. You can't see it right now. It's not because it's fogged in. It's actually because it's smoke. We've got some wildfires that are happening around the area here in Tennessee. And I wanted to take just a second to say if you are watching the channel and you're affected by those, our thoughts and prayers are with you, um, but especially for those that are looking to get out your drone and check out some of the fires, I just want to say that that's a really bad idea. I've actually seen some of the footage of people flying over these areas and I really don't think it's a good idea. One, because it's actually illegal to fly your drone over uh, natural disasters or over wildfires and here's why. So all of that smoke is actually blocking uh, a lot of your ability to see clearly, right? It's really, really low uh, distance and I, you can't even see in the distance here but there's actually some helicopters flying around. Um, those are providing water drops for those fire fires. And so there's all kinds of aircraft that are inside that smoke fighting the fires. And if you fly your drone up into that area, it actually can be very dangerous to those that are actually fighting those fires, especially from the air. So guys, be really smart about your drone usage. Make sure and follow the FAA guidelines and your state's guidelines to be sure that you're doing it correctly and lawfully. So all that to say, today I'm doing things very simple because the, the smoke is pretty thick, um, visibility is pretty low, and I'm not going to fly very high at all today because there's a lot of uh, lower flying aircraft than normal right now because of the firefighting, and so I'm not going to go any more than 100 feet in the air, which is just, you know, pretty typical for buildings around this area. So I'm going to fly over this open field, um, and I'm not going to go in any kind of altitude today. So with that said, you've checked your batteries, you've checked your controller, everything's synced up. Uh, you've got the clearance, you've got nothing around you, you're all ready to go. Let's get into flying the drone. So the very first thing you're going to do is hit the power button on the drone once. It's going to show you the battery level and it won't actually turn on unless you hit it again. So you're going to hit it once to show the battery level and then once again and hold and then it's going to boot up. Lights are going to start coming on it and you want it to be sitting down at this point. And one thing I always forget to tell you, it's really important that you take off this plastic dome. And you want to do this before you power on. So I just made a mistake. So you want to do this to make sure that the camera and the gimbal is completely available to calibrate itself and to, to use it freely. So don't power it up unless you've turned that off because see it's going to actually calibrate itself. Then you got to go to the controller in the top right there's a power button. You're going to hit the power button once. It's going to give you the battery indication. Um, and then just like you did on the drone, you're going to hit it and then hit it one more time and hold and it's going to power up. Now once you have your phone connected, uh, at least for the Android vo version, it says there's an option that when you've connected uh, your phone, it's automatically going to 
load up the DJI Go app. So just like that, it's all loaded. Here's a great example about the firmware. The very first thing you're gonna do is if you have a firmware issue, it's going to say right here. So you can see that it's actually incompatible firmware right now. So all I have to do, uh, because of the aircraft firmware and the firmware of the peripheral, meaning the app or the controller is not up to date, all I have to do is slide this and it's gonna update right there in the corner. So it's saying updating 44%. And so it's gonna download that update using your data connection and then install it on the two devices. All right, so update successful. We are ready to go. The Mavic Pro has restarted. Um, it's ready to go down here on the ground. So all I'm gonna do here in the app is hit the camera button here, and this is gonna launch into everything the camera sees from the Mavic Pro. It's gonna first give you a quick outline of all the things happening here, uh, like the status that you're up to, up to date on the latest firmware, um, and it's also going to show you, you know, your compass, your IMU, make sure everything that's up to date and normal. You'll just X out of that, and there is the shot that that I'm looking at right now. So this is the uh, interface. I'm gonna go over a couple things really quick. I don't have the best lighting right now because it's getting to be dusk. We're gonna go into more of this in a different video, but just really quick overview of the controller. Um, you've got the GPS signal right here. So this is gonna be the bars, um, that the signal you have for GPS connection. Um, and down here on the screen, it actually shows you the same thing, but it tells you how many satellites you're connected to. I'm currently connected to 18 satellites, which is awesome. Uh, and that happened instantaneously, no waiting around for those to connect. Uh, the next thing is the battery percentage. That's 97% battery. Uh, so we're all good to go there. And then the next thing is the controller uh, signal strength from the antennas on the controller. You want to make sure that these are positioned straight up and down. You don't want them to be together like this. That's also actually going to cause interference. Um, you can tilt them if you need to, depending on the angle of your flight. So if you're flying straight out, obviously you want these to be tilted so that these are gonna aim directly at your drone. If you're gonna fly, depending on the angle that you're most comfortable, if you're flying right above you, this is gonna be better. Um, but I haven't even experienced an issue yet with any kind of connectivity. The signal strength on this thing is outstanding. Uh, I have not dropped at all. and uh, I've been always keeping a line of sight because that's part of the law you need to keep line of sight to your drones at all times um, and I have not had a disconnection issue so that's great moving along um, we've got some just info here so it says we're in GPS mode uh, and we're ready to go that's going to give you some flight info to the right and these two areas on the right and left this is rpm right here and on the left it's miles per hour so it's going to tell you how fast your blades are rotating how hard it's working and the miles per hour that you're traveling um, I did try this in sport mode today. Wow, we're gonna get you a video on that. This thing can fly, no pun intended, 40 miles an hour. It was so much fun. We're gonna get to that in another video. Just a few other things. You've got the distance from where you are, the height, how high, uh, the altitude basically, and the clearance of what it thinks it has between uh, what's underneath it directly. Below on the screen, you've got some, some other things that basically are more uh, involved with the camera. You have all of your information, your ISO, your shutter, your uh, exposure compensation, the EV, and your white balance, as well as your settings. So I'm running in 4K, 24 frames per second right now. You also have this button, which turns changes from exposure to autofocus. You can tap to focus on the screen, which is really great. You also have an auto exposure lock. So if you have uh, exposure exactly the way you want it, then you can hit that button. It's gonna lock into the exposure, which is great. I'll go into more of this later. Another really cool, feature I've seen is this map um, and if you've used the DJI Go before you've probably seen this uh, but this map actually shows you the direction that the drone is facing the direction that you are and so if you do happen to lose sight of it you can pull up this map and point your drone back in the direction of home and fly there super brief tutorial just around the app real quick um, the controls on the uh, controller let's go over those very quickly so looking at the controller we have two joysticks right here the one on the left 
left actually controls the altitude. So obviously up, you're gonna raise your altitude, down you're gonna lower your altitude, and this is going to actually turn the uh, the drone left and right. Um, the right stick controls everything else. So forwards, backwards, and strafing left to right. Um, this is some camera controls, which we'll talk about in another video. Um, up top, we have some triggers. These are important. We have a picture trigger here, so if you wanna take a photo while you're in the air, that's just a quick button for that. And here is the record stop and start button. Uh, down here, we have a dial. This is sort of an endless dial, and that actually will dial in your exposure settings. So if you're looking to change your shutter speed or you wanna make it darker, make it wanna lighter, um, we'll go into more of this again in another video, but just a real quick overview, that's what that does. And then this is a small wheel it just goes just that much left and right and that is controlling the gimbal by panning it up and down so you can see on the screen even though I'm not really in the air you can't see much that's looking straight ahead and I'll move that dial down some and it's gonna look straight down to the asphalt there's also two buttons on the back uh, these are user assignable so you can make these whatever you want uh, and I'll talk about some other options for these later all right so let's get the drone up in the air now and go over just a few things we've looked all the way around it now uh, let's get started there's two ways to take off within the app um, first of all you can just hit this button on the left hand side so there's this button right here you can select it and then it says ensure it is safe to take off aircraft will rise to 3.9 feet and hover you're just gonna slide to the right the drones going to rev up and there it is so now we're ready to fly uh, we can take over the, the drone controls and forward, backwards, altitude up, altitude down, and moving left or moving right. Now to stay in the fully automatic mode, I'm gonna describe how you can land it without using any of the joysticks at all. On the controller, there is a little arrow with a home pad. You're gonna hit that button, and it's gonna say return home and land. The distance between the aircraft and home point is less than 20 meters. Aircraft will land if return home is initiated. So, we're gonna to slide to return home. And it's going to land right there. We're gonna confirm that it's gonna land by sliding, because it's safe to land right there and it's landed itself. So I was very close to the home point, so it said, hey, I'm already really close, can I just land where I'm at? And I said, sure, by sliding to the right. So if it was far away, you would hit return home, it would come back to the same area. Uh, it would basically say, hey, I'm back, are you sure you wanna land? Yes, it's a good spot, and it'll land automatically, which is really great, because another drones that I've used, uh, return home, brings it all the way back home, and then lands it, and sometimes the GPS can be just a little bit off. I've had this happened before where it's an uneven surface and it's tried to land right on that which would have been a crash and I've had to go up and grab it in the middle of its landing so this is great that it asks you that all right so next we're going to talk about manually taking off the the way to do this fully manual uh, you have to start up the the uh, motors on the drone first so in order to do that it's a dual stick motion so you're going to take both sticks and move them towards the bottom center and I don't know if you can hear that, but it just sort of revs a little bit. And now the blades are spinning there on the drone. Um, it's not taking off, it's just very low RPMs. And then all you have to do to take off, obviously push the left stick up very gently. It's gonna ramp the RPMs. And I'm off the ground. And I just blocked that with the controller, I'm sorry. But there it is, and I'm just continuing to move it up. To land it manually, all you have to do, get it to a safe location, make sure that everything's clear underneath it, and lower the joystick on the left very slowly, and it's gonna get to a, a point where it's gonna stop. Right there, it stopped. It's not gonna go any lower than that, because there's those sensors underneath the Mavic Pro that are saying, hey, there's ground underneath me right now. I shouldn't go any lower, I'm gonna crash. And so, it's going to say, hey, it's, it's, there's something underneath me, I shouldn't go any lower. If you're sure you want to land, all you have to do is push it down and hold, and it's going to confirm 
and land automatically. You'll continue to hold until the motors have turned off. So guys, that gets you all the way through your first takeoff, your first landing, whether you wanna do it in completely automated or if you wanna do it in manual mode. That's a quick overview of the controller um, and all the things that are happening. Thanks for watching today. I hope that you have enjoyed the video. I hope it's helpful. I'm doing a full series. So we're walking through every single thing here, every mode, every option. We're gonna go over it right here in the videos. I'm gonna take a little bit of time off for Thanksgiving, but I'm coming right back at you. So please subscribe to the channel because I've got a lot of content coming. Thank you so much for doing that. We just hit 400 subscribers. That is awesome. I'm trying to hit 500 by the end of the month. So let's really blow it up this, this weekend. Thank you so much for watching. So my camera just died as I was finishing out the video, but uh, that's okay. I'm gonna end it here with my phone. Just wanted to say thanks so much for watching. Thanks for your support. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Happy Thanksgiving. Be sure and spend some time with your family this week. Eat lots of food. Enjoy the holidays. And I'll see you guys in the next video.